last time on Xenosaga. Maybe not a good idea to just immediately put that in there. You don't know what that's gonna do. Or maybe it'll do nothing. Okay. Never mind, it did something. We found a magical T shape. Oh, don't do that, sir. So that's not good. Don't touch that. That's why. Ha ha! I lit him on fire, I did. Ha ha ha! Pretty nice. Pretty nice. That robot just came out of the wall. I mean, I know we're in VR, but shouldn't they try to keep it at least a little bit practical? I feel like Xion kind of has a bit of a death wish, man. There's a small child there. But I bet the data's really good. That doesn't matter! Greetings, my beautiful viewers. I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome back to Xenosaga, Episode 1. Uh, did, uh, what, what was the full title? Oh, shit. Der Will is er Macht. There we go. Thank you, future Brandon. Appreciate you. Okay, so, yes, we're back. Um, with, uh, that... <laughs> I'm gonna have to remember that. My god, I'm gonna have to remember that and say that every single time, aren't I? Oh my god. Because I could do a cop-out and just say, Welcome back to Xenosaga 1! But you guys all know me by now. I don't... I don't take half measurements like that. Alrighty, so... Yes, last time we met our protagonist, Shion, who is... A very beautiful, nerdy lady. And, uh, she, uh, is making a battle android that lives in a box. It's a chick in a box! <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Um, and uh, yes, uh, apparently there was uh, like we there was a strange um, T-shaped object that kind of looks like a cross that uh, their spaceship picked up, and some people disappeared when they touched it, which I said was a bad thing. But everyone's like, "Oh no, that didn't happen!" Like pretending like it didn't happen, even though it did. And we battle-tested our, uh, super badass robot made for, um, fighting, um, space aliens. Honestly, I'm not kidding you. Uh, in, uh, VR. We tested her battle systems in the VR. And now we're going to go report those findings. And apparently a couple years ago when they first set this up, a couple people died. Well, I'm not sure if it was just a couple. I don't know how many died. Chief, I understand you have your reasons, but a machine is only meaningful as the functional goals it fulfills. Perhaps Cosmos would be happiest if she was able to demonstrate her full capabilities. I mean, maybe. Who was the guy? This guy. This was the guy saying that we should, um, we should be doing full battle tests, like waking her up and everything. And they haven't woken uh, Cosmos up since the first time, well, their, their prototype, before, um... Cosmos, they had a prototype that they woke up that, um, yeah, bad things happened when the prototype woke up. Shall we try the startup experiment again? If there are any items you didn't get last time, I suggest you get them now. I'm sure they'll be useful in the real world, too. Oh, we could go back in there right now. No, I'm not gonna. I got everything I needed last time. Ooh. I didn't know there was a save point in here. What the hell happened? What the hell happened? Okay, so I used a solid, like, like, like a save state, but for some reason, like, when I go to this save now, it, like, won't, it, like, doesn't know how to save. Oh, shit, I hope I haven't, like, fucked up the system. Nope, it's just not gonna work. I don't know what's going on. This has never happened before. Well, I suppose I'm just gonna <laughs> have to do something about that. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, this is per apparently a known thing where like just certain save points just won't function properly. So I'm gonna have to remember to um uh, good thing I did. God, I, when I ended the last episode, I did like um like a like a manual save, like a like a save state, just in case. And thank God I did, because if I didn't, I would have had to redo that entire first dungeon. Oh my God! All right, we go. All right, see you later. Okay, good luck! 
Yeah, Alan's, uh, pretty smitten with her, isn't he? Ha! <laughs> and everyone knows it! Uh... <clears throat> well, back to work. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows uh, Alan's kind of smitten with her, but she on herself has no idea. Oh, Chief, you going to report? Good luck? Well, thank you. When you lose out of the path, when you have become lost in life, seek information. Information will surely give you a glimmer of hope. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Sometimes more information makes things more difficult. What the? I have an email. Press release. Connection gears. Uh, Rio 680, Rio 650. Plugin module. Adding a plugin module is a very simple way to enrich software capabilities. I don't know what any of this stuff is. I literally think it's like legal jargon. So Vectorcom finally announced their latest model of the connection gear, the Rios. They sure did. And guess what? I had the Rios uh, 680 model even before they made the official announcement. Oh, that's the thing I was wearing in the VR. Okay. With my connection gear, I can get all sorts of information by uh, establishing and maintaining on-demand network with the UMN. Uh, the UMN is basically like their form of internet, except for like, it works across like the entire galaxy. Like it were like they've they've established like columns like all throughout like you know the galaxies and everything. That's what like those columns are they mentioned last last episode and like you know when they get to an area where basically it's like it's like oh there's no signal here so you can't warp like through here because they can't access warp space without like you know this connection. The UMN has two very important roles in the world governed by the Galaxy Federation government. One role is traffic infrastructure leaps uh, uh, via leaps in space. As a result, even interstellar travel is made say is uh, is made easy. I see. And the other role, the UMN is an information source that uses a large uh, decentralized network system. We employ agent like AI called uh, procreators like yourself to navigate us around this giant network called the Unus Mundus Network. Unus Mundus Network. Wow, that's quite a name, isn't it? That's right! Well, allow me to perform my duties as your uh, procreator. Procreator. As a, a guide would have been so much easier. Give you a little more information about emails. Emails will be displayed above old ones, which means uh, newest emails will always be displayed at the top of the list. I have to be careful because uh, the sor uh, sorting order is different from the items below. Yeah, and note that some emails uh, request a reply. Most of those emails must be answered within a fixed amount of time, so it's best to reply as soon as possible. Okay. Okay, I'll make it a point to reply AS ASAP. One more thing, you can skip to important parts of the email by pressing square. Uh, by the way, you should have received tutorial emails from the first R&D division about equipping eggs and characters. Okay. Please refer to them if there's anything you don't understand. Got it. Okay. Uh, lastly, about the connection gear functions used during the encephalon test. Talking about the uh, vaporizer plugin. It function allowed the destruction of specific objects on the map. It can actually be used if it clears the, uh, the next uh, simulation test. Yeah. Then it'll get a perfect score on the test and it's just a matter of time before someone gives one of the gives you one of the plugins oh by the way you don't you need to go see the captain you're right better go to the bridge and see the captain okay that was the important part uh, okay yeah but it just goes to like the important parts oh I keep pushing square and it goes to all the important parts okay okay nothing apocalyptic in any of the emails thankfully I have a bad feeling about this mission. Hope it's just my imagination. They do this weird, like, top-down thing when going through certain doors. It's really weird. 
She's really got you trained, hasn't she, sir? What? Train? What do you mean? Hey, what are you smiling at? Hurry up and get back to work. I'm on it. See how he always changes the subject? What was that, Togashi? Nothing at all, sir. You're just hearing things. Ha! I swear. Huh? What's up? Still not convinced? Oh, no. It's not that. It's just... I know how you feel. But you saw what happened just now. Even the chief is cautious sometimes. Sometimes. Besides. Oh, that's right. You just transferred in a month ago, right? I guess you couldn't have known. You mean the accident from two years ago? I've heard about it, but I don't know any details. Oh, right. Oh, no, she left the data. Now the two of you can be alone. Why don't you ask her out while you're at it? Ah! We can handle the rest by ourselves. This is your big chance. I love how everyone is so supportive of his, of like like how smitten he is. Like they're just like, dude, just ask her out already. I told you guys, it's not like that. It is. Anyway, I'd better get this to her. Good luck! Yeah. Go, Tiger! <laughs> Jeez! They just don't know when to quit. It's not like I don't want to. I just can't. Yeah, there's a very specific reason he doesn't. Like, he had, like, you know, like, he, he really has the hots for her, but he doesn't ask her out, and, like, I don't want to spoil why, but it'll make sense why he doesn't. He's... All I'm going to say is, he's being a gentleman. <gasps> it's the tea! You're off. Oh, Jesus. And you. And you. Oh, man. You're all a bunch of slackers. Yeah. Oh, man. Listen up. Ah! You lazy bums are the cause of that accident. You're not getting any time to confess your sins, though. One. That guy, why does he have an X on his face? I don't understand. Like, I, I always remember him being really weird because, you know, he beats up his employees because he's an asshole. But I mean, like, seriously, just, like, why the giant X on his face? I don't understand. It is never explained. Not, because I'm not giving it to you. If you got time to be sorry, you got time to get your ass in gear. If you got time to think, you got time to get your fingers moving. Don't even start thinking you got a brain to think with. You're gonna become machines and work like them day and night. You're all. Oh, God. A bunch of slackers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I wouldn't want to be part of his, you know, division. Um. One thing I do want to say, though, because I, I, I know that probably a lot of you are, may or may not be, um, aware of this. Um,. That voice was Bob Pappenbrook, Bryce Pappenbrook's father. So, yeah, you know, like, a lot of people know, like, a lot of people who play video games and, like, you know, know anime know who Bryce Pappenbrook is. You know, he's Kirito in Sword Art Online, and, of course, we just saw him as Law in Tales of Arise not too long ago. But, um, you know, his his father um, there was a very prolific voice actor who, unfortunately, passed away in the early 2000s. Um, I believe he was having, uh, heart surgery and unfortunately something went wrong, but I don't, I don't remember. All I know is his, his passing was very sudden and everything. And, um, whenever I hear him, I, I like to point him out because, you know, I, I knew who he was. Like I recognized, like he was one of the first voice actors whose voice I actively recognized. And like, you know, then when I found out that, you know, Bryce was his son, I thought that was Amazing. They were even in some video games together. Um, and it was it was so cool and I really liked it. He passed he passed away when I was in high school. And it's just like I remember so many times hearing him in, in like this game and so many others, and in a bunch of like, you know, anime too. Whenever I hear him now, I'm I always feel a little, you know, uh, that that twinge of sadness because obviously, you know, when 
someone, you know, passes away, there's a lot of pain and everything. But I mean, like, I remember watching a video and like the reason that I found so much inspiration from Bob Pattenbrook was because of the fact that um, he uh, there there was a intro to like voice acting, like anime, like, you know, like DVD, like it was like a DVD about a bunch of it was a bunch of interviews from a bunch of different voice actors like who I all like who like I loved and wanted to like be like when I was in like middle school high school like but way before I got to college and a thing that he said in that that really shocked me was he said you know it's not easy and it's going to suck and there's going to be times when you are negative 83 cents in the bank and that's when you're going to want to give up but you can't because that's just when it's that's just when it's getting good. And I remember I remember those words and I remember him saying that. And like during the very difficult times that I've had in my life like being in debt, you know, from going to college and everything and then, you know, my struggles who because I mean like as you may know, I'm not exactly a famous voice actor or anything. I've done some plays and I've done a few like ads and things, but like nothing really that I would say is that I think is substantial. Like I want to do like anime and video games too. I think about that quote a lot and it's a thing that kind of really helps me keep going when I'm in like, you know, when I'm like feeling down on myself or not getting a role or something, you know, because I mean... Yeah, I'm I'm never upset when other people I know get roles. Like I have fellow actors that I've taken classes with that have gotten roles in anime and things and I am psyched for them. I'm super happy for them. But, you know, I'm not going to deny that I'm sad that, you know, I still haven't found any form of, you know, I wouldn't say success because I'm not after success. I don't care about success or being super successful or like getting a lot of money from voice acting. I just want to act and voice act and put my passion out there for other people to hear. That's all I've ever wanted. And I mean, it all started because of, you know, Bob Pattenbrook. I remember those words. And I know I went off on a bit of a tangent there in the middle of this game, but I mean, this game is also a nostalgia trip for me. And hearing his voice really just brought back a lot of memories all at once. And I don't know, I just felt like I needed to talk about it for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry for reminiscing so much and everything, but I always point out voice actors and, you know, I, I figured like, oh, I should point out, you know, Bob Pattenbrook because one, he's Bryce's father and two, he, he was an amazing actor. So yeah, I mean, I just, I just felt like I should call it out and I got uh, lost in my little nostalgia trip. So sorry about that. But uh, either way, yeah, I, I, I love Bob Pattenbrook whenever I hear him in anything. Boy, I guess not every department's run like ours. Oh, definitely not. Oh, boy. Oh, a little flashback here. Oh, it's on a planet. You can actually... You can see the, the thing outside. <sighs> ah, raining outside. They must have been, on, like, working on a planet at the time. You're still here, huh? Hmm. Killing yourself over work won't get you very far. Oh. How are you? I had to get this data done before morning, so I... Well, what are you doing here so late, Kevin? You'd better get some sleep. We've got an early morning ahead. Here, this is for you. Oh. Huh? Oh, thank you. Mm. To tell you the truth, I haven't been able to sleep lately. Something's been on my mind. On your mind? Wow, I just, 
I, I'm sorry. I just saw, like, you know, future Brandon, go back and replay this, please. We literally just saw the cup go from her hand to, like, right into the seat. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just still remember that in these old games. And I just, I always laugh whenever I see that. Oh, my God, it's funny. Tomorrow, she's finally going to wake up. Oh, no. This is the day before the incident. I'm looking forward to seeing her come to life, but... I have no idea what to say to her when she wakes up. It's been bothering me. I'm just being weird, huh? Not exactly. Yeah, Kevin was the original uh, lead on the project. Um, Shion took over for him. Why don't you just say, Good morning, Cosmos. Good, good morning? Well, that's what you say to someone when they wake up, right? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hmm. Thanks. I think I can finally get some sleep now. Hmm. Glad to help, sir. You should get some rest, too. All right. Well, good night. Yeah, they don't uh, explicitly mention it, but uh, those two were dating at the time. Yeah, she and Kevin were dating at the time of uh, the yeah. accident. Everybody's so eager to see her. Oh, what the hell? Okay, where did everybody go? This seems... Uh, the small child is back! She's not just in the VR. No, no, I am approaching the tea. The tea is trying to eat me! Mountains? Huh. What? I can't hear her. Ah! 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 Oh! That's a different tea! That's like the b big, big tea! We have the little tea and we have the big tea! No, no, no. Don't go into the tea, little girl. That's not safe for you. No, Shion, no. Shion, no. Do not touch the tea. She touched the tea. Ah, tea for tuning fork. You can tell by the ding noise. Look out! Uh. Ooh! Uh. Those things are going, like, you know, like, they may not look like they're going fast, like, very fast, but, I mean, like, if, if you go by, like, like, we saw them earlier going at a steady rate, they're at least going about 10 or 15 miles an hour. And 10 or 15 miles an hour, imagine a car hitting you at 10, 15 miles an hour. Sure, yeah, good chance of survival. But she's also on a platform. If the the hit didn't immediately knock her unconscious or do some major damage to her, it could knock her over the edge, she would fall to her death. Shion, I think you have a death wish, and I are concerned! Watch it, you slacker! I am not even a part of your team! Only authorized personnel are allowed up here. I've had three people vanish on me already! They touched the tea, didn't they? Get the hell out of here! My men will start slacking off. They see bimbos like you around. I'm so sorry. Bimbo. Excuse you, Mr. X-Man. Asshole. I don't know what to call you except for X-Man, but X-Man, you know, is supposed to be for the X-Men, and, you know, I like them, and I don't like him. I don't, I, I don't know what to call you, sir. Asshole. I'm just going to call him the asshole, man. 
the reject. He has an X on himself. He is the reject. Um, anyway, Mr. Reject Man, you, you use the word bimbo and that was not a nice thing to say to a lady. Also, did you guys know that the original meaning of the word bimbo meant for like a tough guy? Yeah, it had nothing to do with women. It was like a tough guy you would see at a bar, almost like a bouncer. Yeah. Little bit of word history. Idiot that led civilians on this ship. It's a... Okay, just want to say, you said, who's the idiot who let civilians on the ship? This is a research ship that they let the military on. Who let you on the ship, asshole? The hell are you staring at? Fuck! Oh my god! How does he get away with that? Okay, it looks like she didn't actually touch the tea, which is why she's still here. Miss I got some information I'd like to share with you. Well, are you interested to hear it? No, no, it won't be much trouble for you at all. How about it? Shh. Only if it's quick. Oh, first give me your email address. No, no, you never know who might be listening in, right? The safest way is share secrets through email. Sure, that's fine. We won't regret it. Now it's settled then. See, everything appears to be in order. I'll send you an email in a little while. Don't worry, it won't take too long. Please be on the lookout for it. What? Uh, is it gonna be about all the abuse you guys have been taking? Excuse me, is Lieutenant Commander still here? Is he still barking orders? Yes. He is, and he's still punching people, because he are a dickbag. How did that guy get to be a lieutenant colonel? She is just staring at her hand. Chief! 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 Oh. What do you mean, Alan? Alan? Alan! Don't act so surprised. Didn't you forget something important? You know, it's dangerous wandering around in a daze like that. Yeah. Sorry. I was just thinking about something. Okay. Are you alright? No! Huh? Yeah. Uh, I'm just not myself today. Yeah, all the weird stuff started happening when you brought the tea on board. I blame the tea. See, the small child is following her! I'm not sure if she's a ghost child or not. The game hasn't really made that explicitly clear. Alan, thanks for stepping in back there. Uh, yeah. No, I should have spoken to the new guy earlier, so you don't need to thank me. But it would really help if you would try to understand their feelings more. I, I know everyone's still a little uneasy about Cosmos, but they've been pouring their hearts and souls into this project. They all yeah. want to see with their own eyes the end results of what they've been working so hard to complete. I feel the same way myself, you know? I know that. It's just that I... Yeah. The incident. The incident, right? Yeah. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I see. You're... Hmm? Sorry, that's not quite it. Forget about it. It's nothing. Let's just hurry up and get Cosmos completed, okay? Oh, who could that be? More Realian maintenance? They really should stop calling you all the time. Yeah. Technically, it's a violation of regulations for you to deal with other divisions. Besides, aren't they expecting you on the bridge? Oh, don't worry about it. I don't want to brush them off. Besides, it's on the way, and I've got some time. See ya. He didn't ask her. Oh. Ugh. I forgot to ask her out after work. Yeah. Like, you can tell, like, he wants to. But the thing that keeps holding him back is what happened at the incidents, which, you know, some of you may already be able to speculate by now, but I'm not gonna, you know, bring it up. 
Uh-oh, I should bring the Realian service data with me. Let's in my room. Better go get it. If I remember correctly, the room is straight down this corridor. Okay, cool. <sighs> Shafted again. And to think, I even snuck out without telling my boss. Lately, it's always like this. What? What did you get shafted with? I don't understand. On the battlefield, you must always be calm. We soldiers are trained so that we can stay cool at all times. Hmm. Really? Oh, the red switch is to open and close the bulkhead. Don't mess with it. Ah! I see red button. I press red button. Don't panic, Mr. Soldier Boy. Alrighty, let's see what happens when we open it up. Looks like this guy wasn't as brave as we thought. Stop picking on me. I can't take it. Mama! I have a feeling I just triggered him and I didn't mean to. God, I feel like an asshole. Shion's kind of a bitch, isn't she? Segment like number 18. Okay, that's nice. What is in here? Is this my room? Is this my room? I think this is my room. I'm a... I'm going to do a quick manual save first. Nope. Okay. Should like to rest. Sure. Maybe that'll fix things. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to have to use uh, save states for a while. Oh, shit. Oh, I got an email from Mizuki. I wonder what it is. Oh, Miyuki, not Mizuki. Shion, how are you doing? Thank you for the MWS weapon you used on your left hand during battle. Uh, data from tests we ran alongside Cosmos and the Encephalon. I moved one step forward with my uh, magnificent plan thanks to you. Now the only thing left is a real test, so I sent you a real MWS. It should reach you soon. If the Gnosis attack, they're so, oh, if the Gnosis attack now, they're so dead. And the Gnosis are the space aliens that uh, Cosmos was uh, created to fight. Doing these tests provides a bit of aerobic exercise and may even have some weight loss effects. So in a way, you're killing two birds with one stone. Please make sure to pick it up uh, when it arrives. P.S. I lost three kilometers. You see, it works just like I said. The apple diet really works. Interesting. Cool. So I can get the real weapon. A magnificent plan? What in the world is that girl planning? Well, let's see here. Ah! I don't know where I'm going. I hope I'm going the right way. Sorry, we won't be able to go this way for a while. Okay. Maybe I need to go back. There was that um, pathway that went off to the left there. And now we're going to be one of the more interesting ideas in this game. It's this idea, synthetic human beings. Hello, you rang? My apologies, Miss Uzuki. It seems we're constantly in need of your help. No pro problem, Lieutenant. I want everyone to be healthy and happy too, after all. So, what's the problem today? Well, I'm trying to teach them some new battle algorithms to better reflect the unit's reorg. But the integration is not going very smoothly. You're right. He's rejecting the data. Let's see. To put it simply, because, um, I don't remember if they actually give you a full explanation of what a realian is in this game. I think they, I, I don't think I actually figured out until the second game what a realian specifically was. 
Reallians are basically mass-produced synthetic humans with augmented abilities. Basically, they are like a hybrid of humans and androids. They're like, uh, like they have like emotions and ideals and things like that, but those things can be suppressed or outright completely controlled because they have, basically, they have synthetic, like, mechanical parts in them, but they can be mass-produced. So, basically, they can mass-produce an entire species that they basically use for, you know, cheap labor and stuff like that, and it's really kind of messed up how, like, there's so much discrimination against them and they themselves like i was born this way i can't help i can't help that i was born this way so yeah like it's it's a bit of a a, a bit of an allegory to um like you know race and a bit of racism in it and i i like where it goes but uh we'll we'll find out more here um uh, i supposed to do something Need to check the reality is lying on the on the maintenance beds, right? Thank you for your help. How is that? It's just a temporary fix, though. Yes, I cannot express it appropriately, but I feel like some weight has been lifted. Everything feels a bit brighter. Thank you very much. That should do it. Well, do you have any dizziness or anything? No, I am fine. We are combat models, so even our training causes heavy wear and tear. Regular tune-ups like this are very much appreciated. No, no, no. I didn't really do much. Yeah, see, they're, they're kind of, like, you know, like... Like, robotic in a way, but they have the capabilities. Like, you'll see some realities later on that are almost, in, like, almost completely indistinguishable from human beings. Okay, your valuables... Uh, your values are stable. I don't see any particular problems. Understood. Then I will return to my duties. Wait a minute. I think you could express a bit more joy. Maybe your emo emotional expression isn't working right? Oh. Um, lately I find functional impediments occurring when communicating with a certain person. My pulse becomes rapid, perspiration increases, and I become unable to articulate well. Hmm, that's odd. I wonder if it's an OS bug. I think it's more of the fact that she likes the person she's talking to? Hmm, I wonder what's wrong. Your brainwave seems to be chaotic. Hmm. Ever since I was assigned to the Woglinde, which is the, the ship they're on, by the way, I haven't been the same. I've been sl I've slowly lost mental composure. My body has begun to manifest uh, minute spasms. Hmm, the shape of these waves. Could it be the fear of battle? Well, and quite possible. Like I said, they're... They are very human in so many regards that it's hard to determine, you know? Hmm, nothing seems particularly unusual. Are you not feeling well? I have been studying fables and proverbs, but I am unable to use them properly. And I am always being laughed at. Hmm... But your linguistic center doesn't seem to have any abnormalities. Weird. We had a full-time counselor do the servicing before we left port. Unfortunately, it's a long tour and we only have maintenance beds. Problems always crop up. Long missions are stressful for us, too. Besides, these guys were just born, so it's not surprising. Yeah. Well, I've made some adjustments, but please contact 3rd Division once we return. I recommend they receive more intensive counseling soon. I'll be sure to do so. You know, I'm really impressed. Providing Realian psych support on top of developing Cosmos? I hear even specialized counselors have a hard time... Oh, I'm just making the most of what my mentor taught me. I'm glad I could be of help. Ah, yes. Besides, I always wanted to work in the 3rd Division. Actually, I'm thinking about requesting a transfer once my current work's finished. But Vector's first R&D division has the best researchers in the organization. 
Everyone knows not just anyone can get in there. Yeah. Are you sure that you want to transfer? Oh, yes. Besides, my family's always asking, how did you get assigned to the First Division? There must have been a mistake in the paperwork. Who knows? Maybe they're right. <laughs> Besides, I want to learn so much more about them. What's learning about them going to do for you? Oh, boy. Lieutenant Virgil. Ooh. He's got some nasty scars, doesn't he? Uh, what, what you doing there, buddy? Their stench. Yeah, what about it? What? It reeks. I can't get their rotten odor out of my system. Can't you smell it? No. It makes me sick to my stomach. I think he's... Huh? I think he's crazy. That's enough. You got your orders from the lieutenant commander, didn't you? One of the goals of this operation is to enhance combat support between the eggs and the new model realians. And yet your... Support? Huh. In a battle against them, the last thing I want to worry about is supporting a bunch of untested weapons-grade realians. Um, excuse me, but these people are highly qualified soldiers. These people? They are technically people. You're treating equipment like people? Yeah, it's... Oh, you really shouldn't say things like that. These people have the same intellect and emotions as us. And the Milsha Charter clearly spelled out the basic human rights of realians when it was ratified in 4763. And yet they still continue to mass produce them. Like, that's the thing. It's like, say, it would be like us cloning people. Like, essentially, like, you're just putting us in, in just a, a different ter a way is that it'd be like us mass producing clones of people and then saying, yes, they have rights. That's good. But you know a shit ton of people are gonna, like, be racist against them because they don't like what's different. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's good that they have basic human rights, but in the end, those rights, like, as a part of this, you know, what you'll learn is that those rights can be suspended at any time because human lives take precedence. So, literally in the law, it says they have basic human rights up until you have to choose between a regular human and a realian, in which case you have to choose what's better for the regular humans above the realians. That's literally in the code legal. What a load of crap. Get off your soapbox. You act noble and preach about humanity, but in the end... They're just equipment as far as your company's concerned. It is a company, so yes. More like merchandise. We don't treat them anything like equipment or merchandise. Then why do you categorize them as weapons-grade realians? How much more evidence do you need than that? The, he has a point. Whatever you care to call them, they're nothing but tools of warfare. Besides, I know your little secret. You guys have an emergency override code to control them, don't you? Yeah, they do. <gasps> Virgil, why are you... Oh. Huh? What do you want? It is as you say, sir. We are manufactured as merchandise and raised accordingly. However, I take great pride in what I do now. Oh. And this pride was not forced upon me. It is of my own free will. <clears throat> free will, huh? Well, good for you. You'd better just enjoy it while you can. The time will come soon enough when you'll realize what's going on. Just you wait. You know, in a lot of ways, I, I like the way that he acts. Because, yeah, while he's being kind of a racist son of a bitch... Is he... You're... He... A DME addict? 
A DME addict? What is that? Is that a thing I can look up? I wonder if I go to the UMN if I can do that. I wonder if... Because I know that there are... Okay, this is where emails are. Well, that's all I've got. So I don't have a glossary in this game. I know later games have like a glossary where you can look certain stuff up in case you don't understand something. I'm going to see what that is real quick. Hold on. This is the wonderful thing about having the internet in the modern age. Because when I was first playing this game, I was like, what the fuck is that? And they don't properly explain what a DME addict is. Okay, apparently there is supposed to be a database in this game, but I guess I don't have access to it yet or something. Maybe I'll get it later on, but um, a DME addict is essentially uh, someone who has... Uh, this is kind of gross. Um, consumed the flesh of a realian. Basically what they're saying is that that guy at some point ate other realians. Well, he not other realians. He ate... Realian flesh or like, you know, like innards or something and basically what it is is that like because Realians are like genetically modified it It has basically some pretty Negative effects on the body sure it can keep you alive So like I think what they're trying to hint at is that like at one point it was really bad like, like possibly he was in like a war area and he was forced to eat Realian flesh to survive like maybe dead, you know Realians that fought near him or something that he was forced to survive um but yeah apparently not everyone has those extreme symptoms but like yeah those i was wrong those were not scars on his face those were literal signs of eating realians my apologies ms uzuki he wasn't always like that but then something happened yeah is he an old Acquaintance? We were classmates at the military academy, and I've been stuck with them since then. It was Milsha. Oh. I see. So, that's why. You knew about that, huh? Then again, anyone planning to join the third division would know. Yep. Well, I. I'm from Milsha. Huh? Of course. No one's allowed to go there anymore. My family moved to Second Milsha when they transferred the capital after the war. Hmm. And my brother still lives there alone. Yeah. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring back painful memories. Oh, it's all right. After all, it's something we must never forget about. For our sake and theirs as well. Oh no, I forgot I had to report to the bridge. <sighs> Sorry, I'll come back to check on them later. Bye. <laughs> <sighs> she is adorable sometimes. I love I love Shion. She's cool. Yeah, they were talking about with uh Milsha there and everything. Um she uh like you know ba basically there was a war and um the planet that she is from essentially, unfortunately, um, was destroyed. There's an email for Shion. Ms. Uzuki, thank you for your recent subscription to the Omega Byte Stores database. Where's the important stuff? Oh! Human database. Oh! Oh, I can... Oh, now I'll be able to look up that stuff I was talking about. The fact that you received an email from the Omega Byte store uh, must mean you will be able to use the UMN database in the near future. Very perceptive. By the way, why did you select Keyword and Gnosis as your database? You have a reason, don't you? Of course. The reason why I thought using Keyword is because I can file all the keywords that come up in conversation in a database. That way I can always go back and check the detail, uh, detailed description later on. I'm pretty familiar with most technical terms, but sometimes keywords that I don't know uh, the definitions for appear, like what just happened with us. Mainly this is for the audience, I see. 
I selected Gnosis just in case. It's a possibility I might have to fight them in the future, right? I agree with you. You probably won't get by uh, by evading battles with Gnosis. On top of that, you may be placed in a situation where you have to fight the same type of Gnosis more than once. Right, that's exactly uh, why I thought the best thing to do was gather data on them. Cool. So now I have a database. I think so. Let's go check here. Yep. Keywords. Ah, I can even look up people. Ooh, 24 years old. Okay. Apparently comes from a wealthy family, but he does not like sharing the details of his background with anyone. Okay. Interesting. DME addiction. Yeah, an addiction which is also the consumption of realian body tissue. Blood vessels carry the ingested tissue, mainly from the central nervous system to the brain, which results in neural structure, uh, neural structure changes. Literally changes in your neural network. That's not good. Physical and mental states are then altered, but occasionally these, uh, this results in death when an allergic reaction occurs. Oh, fuck. The external symptoms of this addiction include hardening and cornification of the skin. Oh, boy. Milsha. There we go. Planet where the war that came to be known as the Milshan Conflict took place, also known as Xion's birthplace. Milshan Charter, a body of laws enacted after the Milshan Conflict. Yep. Ah, Miyuki, she's 20 years old. Younger colleague of Xion and quite the mechanical otaku. <laughs> that makes sense. She's the one who built the, the machine, after all. There we go. Xion Uzuki. She's only 22. Okay, I was wanting to see how old she was. Assigned to R&D division at the age of 18. That's not surprising. Wait. Okay, I'm just now realizing something. In the first episode, it said like... It said like 20XX. And then it said 4,000 years later. So it should be 6,000. Like the year 6,000, right? But it's the year 4,700 and something. Though she appears clumsy at times, she's actually quite athletic. In particular, her high kicks are powerful enough to render a grown man unconscious. She apparently also uh, wields a jujutsu-like technique passed on from her grandfather. Unfortunately, this skill does not appear in this episode. Yeah. We do see later on that basically uh, she and her family are, like, you know, as you can tell by the names, they're, uh, you know, descended from uh, the Japanese people. And her brother is very culturally Japanese. Her brother makes an appearance in this game, um, but he's doesn't become a major character until the second game. He actually joins the party in the second game. Hello, Mr. Realian. Well, Glinda is truly a wonderful ship, but I am unable to express in words how wonderful I think the ship really is. Please go have a walk around the ship and enjoy the greatness of this craft for yourself. I mean, I would, but... Okay, I guess I will. I'm going into this person's room. Hello, sir. What is this? Do you want something from me? You can imagine that a woman as beautiful as you, who would appear in such a messy room, you truly are a trash in the dunghill. Are you saying I'm trash? That's right, trash. Sure you don't mean jewel? Uh, you, you could say that too. Even Homer sometimes bobs. Everyone slips up. Homer sometimes nods. Wait, is that how it goes? Yeah, you're kind of an idiot. Oh my god, let me see if I can actually save now. Oh my god, I can save here! Oh my god, I can save here! Okay, we're gonna save in a different slot from last time. Yeah, the save is all messed up there, and I think that's what's causing the error. Okay. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. I have this... I have the save states that I'll be using regardless, just in case, you know. Oh, it's a lounge area. Email for Xion. Oh, let's see, may as well read it. it Maybe important. Xion, how are you? Have you seen the fruit of my labor, the MWS yet? It's quite impressive, wouldn't you say? What, you haven't tried it out yet? You really ought to see it in action. Anyway, I have a juicy story to share with you today. I think you'll find it interesting. It actually concerns Cosmos. Thought this might get your full attention, full and undivided attention. You know Boris from the second division's small munitions group, right? He's the guy who accidentally uh, set off the experimental uh, uh, VS transmit generator and was nearly fired for it. Well, it seems he hasn't learned his lesson yet, and he's been secretly planning a uh, go behind the director's back again. Thought he was acting suspicious 
so I kept my eye on him, and my institution was right. When I pressed him for answers, we struck up an interesting little uh, conversation. I think he filled me in because I kept quiet and let him do all the talking. <laughs> Ooh, Boris told me that his plan is to develop the ultimate weapon befitting of Cosmos. Should he succeed in realizing the potential the power of this weapon, uh, one attack will damage the, uh, the enemy's entire party. Basic design is complete. Uh, all that's left is to test uh, in a simulation now. Calculator uh, used in the design, however, is a bit lacking, so we decided to farm out the uh, calculation process among several computers. At the moment, we are strictly recruiting friends and interested vector personnel. A few people from the first R&D division are participating, too. You have the new uh, Rios model, right? Okay. So I'm just saying, if you'd like the most customer, okay. What do you think? Sounds interesting, right? Please reply if you'd like to participate. We'd really like uh, Cosmos to have this weapon. Ooh, could you respond quickly to this email? Give me a response while you're still on the Wooklyn Day. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. Why not? Oh, wait, I should probably read. Or oh, is that all of it? Is that all of it? Please send me the necessary file. Okay, sure. I didn't do this in the original game. I think I ignored this one. When Boris finishes his weapon, it'll increase Cosmos' battle strength. I think this, I think that's reason enough to help. Cool. Perfect! I didn't even know I could do that. I didn't even know I could do that. There's so many things I missed in my original playthrough. Holy fuck! Am I going the right way? I don't know where I'm going. I genuinely don't know. And the map isn't helpful because it only shows where, like, icons of people are. Hey, Shion! Over here! Right here! Oh, it's Sergeant Swain. Or Swine, maybe. S Swain, probably. Hello, Sergeant Swain. Is something the matter? I got something for you. I got a present uh, for you with the results of my research. Research? You mean your hobby of investigating all the doors in the ship? Yep, that's it. But it's not just investigating the doors. Want to know what I'm researching? Yeah, sure, tell me. You know, the nanomachine core is still in a black box, just like uh, it was first developed. Bit of a secret, but I hear it has a bug. Used, it's used for building and construction. Has a tendency to create useless corridors with locks. It poses no real harm, so it's uh, been kept under wraps. Just happened to find a secret document describing this bug, and this is a collection of all the hidden uh, passages all over the world based on that document. This is the secret to my personal hidden warehouse. There's still 17 or 18. I don't think I've opened yet. Uh, I search for them every time we disembark, but it's tough. So you try to find these secret doors. One of them was in the Encephalon. That's weird. Well, it doesn't seem fun. Almost like a treasure hunt, right? Well, the ones on the ship are mine, so don't open them. Or rather, you've already found a door? That's my Shion, your sharp as attack. Thank you very much. Obtain segment file. Can I open this one? Mark your segment file number seven. What do you think of the segment file? If you think it's interesting, search patiently. Uh, even if you find the entrance, the key's somewhere in a totally different place. Now, I've got a bad feeling about uh, this particular mission. Maybe your intuition uh, improves over the years. If something happens to me, uh, would you find all of them and open them? I just hate to leave things unfinished. Why is everyone throwing up death flags? Everyone's saying that this is a dangerous mission. Email for Xion! I have so many. Namco releasing shooting game Ninja Assault. I actually played that game! I remember that game! Oh my god, I remember! Yeah, it was like a, like a gun con game where like, you know, you had like the gun, you pointed at the screen, you shot with it. Yeah, Namco made it. Gun con 2 compatible. All new original character Aoi Kunoichi uh, makes an appearance. Yeah, I remember this. Three too many games, uh, endless hours of fun. Interesting. That's supposed to be the interesting email someone mentioned I'd be getting earlier. Sounds like fun. I enjoy video games. <laughs> ah! Namco was really like, like, look forward to our other games within the game you are already playing. <clears throat> and how long is she gonna make me wait? She said to wait in front of the information board, but she hasn't bothered to show up at all. I mean, my break's almost over.
Comes to the elevator, goes to the bridge. Your chief Uzuki of Vector, right? Captain is expecting you. Please hurry. Alrighty. I'm going. I'm going to the bridge. To the bridge! Hey, it's the commander guy. You're ten minutes late. It's no wonder your research is behind schedule. I'm sorry. It's taking... Instead of taking up more time with your apologies, you should hurry up and present your report to the captain. Wow, that guy is such an asshole. Please excuse me for being late. Don't worry about it. Now that you're here, can you please show us uh, Cosmos' data? Yes, sir. Right away. I see. I understand the basic specs. So... Where's the actual field data? There isn't any. Well, it's not quite ready. All I can provide today is up to A7. So you don't have it. Well, we'll begin testing with a mock-up unit very soon. But the system is still a little unstable and... Aren't you just making excuses? Listen, Chief Uzuki. Why do you think you're on this ship? Think about that for a moment. Isn't this a research ship? They said it was. This fleet may be newly outfitted, but it was assembled under major time constraints. And we have eggs units, but the 100 series observational units that go with them aren't available until later. Oh. What would happen if by some chance we were attacked by those things? I don't think I need to- I, I love how they keep saying things. Everyone's afraid to say what they are, the Gnosis. And you'll see how frightening they are pretty soon. To describe the outcome to you, the purpose of Cosmos deployment was to address this issue. Or am I mistaken? No, sir. Listen, you're not in a laboratory anymore. You're on a warship. This is a battlefield. Cosmos was supposed to be our frontline defense here, and now you're telling us it hasn't even woken up yet. Yeah. There's no point in having a weapon that can't even get out of bed. That thing's only meaningful to us when it's fully operational. Why can't you- Let it go, Commander. These people are working under serious time constraints. Just like our own squadron. Besides, they're only one step away from actual field testing. In the end, we all want to see this operation completed without having to resort to that thing. Don't we? Yeah. Of course, Captain. But I believe we- uh, who's calling me? Is there a problem? Uh, uh, no. Something urgent's come up. If you'll excuse me. Hmm. I wonder what's wrong. Aren't you the captain? Shouldn't you know? Well, never mind. Well, it is... That's enough. It is quite possible that uh, the commander actually holds a higher position than the captain, or uh, possibly an equal rank to the captain. That, like, the captain is just, like, the captain of the fleet, so he's in charge, but the commander may have, like, a higher overall position? I'm not really 100% sure. For today, Chief Uzuki, let me know if any new developments arise. I'm sorry we failed to meet your expectations. Oh, there's no need to apologize. What's important to us is how reliable the system is once we start using it. Yes. Rushing the project won't get us anywhere. See, this guy gets so it. Calm down and take as much time as you need. The government's funding it all anyway, right? <laughs> you must be tired. Take the rest of the day off. Oh! You, you can do that? You can tell her to take the rest of the day off? I'm not sure if that's how that works. Also, I don't know why that commander is being such an asshole. We are we all already know that if anything bad happens, it's Pollyanna's fault. Remember in the last episode, Pollyanna doomed us all? Uh the future brand and flash flashback to that real quick. We made it this far, we'll be fine. Besides, this asteroid field we're in is perfect for hiding the fleet from them. See? It's all Pollyanna's fault. If anything bad happens, it's all on her. Alright, what is this email about? Great, I thought you'd be in. Please save the file attached to this email. 
Uh, attachment is a plugin called Sparkle, which is being di uh, distributed for free by a software company called Magell Magnelli Systems. Okay. Please save the file attached to this email, Sparkle. Plugin works by taking advantage of the unused cycles communication gear, so it's not a burden uh, to the communication gear's functions. Okay. Oh, right, I have to actually download the thing. Old file attached, and I already downloaded it, apparently. Okay, now maybe I can get whatever this sparkle is. You're not Pollyanna. Pollyanna was over there before. Where's Pollyanna? Pollyanna? You're not Pollyanna. Where is Pollyanna, the lady who was not concerned, who said we'd all be fine? Are you Pollyanna? You kind of look like Pollyanna. Sorry, I'll forgive their rude remarks. Everyone's feeling a bit uneasy about the information blackout surrounding this mission. All right, yeah, they didn't want anyone to know what was going on. Okay, okay. Pollyanna was sitting there, and there's an empty chair there. <gasps> oh no! Pollyanna disappeared! One of two things. She either touched the tea, or she knows something that we don't know, and she's abandoned ship early! That bitch! If we later see her on the bridge, then I won't be surprised. Ship broadcast. Chief Uz... Chief Uzuki of Vector First r &D Division, you have a package from Vector HQ. Please claim your package at the eggs hangar as soon as possible. Okay. Oh, are you Pollyanna? Hey, enough is enough. Don't blame them for everything. Shut up. I've had enough of your equal rights for realians, and it goes against humanity crap. The realians of the ship aren't like the old models that were assigned to Milsha. An incident like that will never happen again. How could you be so sure? After all, there's nothing but there's nothing but combat weapons. Wow. Okay, so it is the guy. Whoever you talk to first is the first voice. Okay. What's so great about realians? There's no way you can trust those puppets. You know what happened to Milsha, don't you? Who knows, the ones aboard the ship might go crazy too. Yeah. Uh, the the Milshan conflict basically was... What the heck? I look at the switch, I hear a voice. Press me, hurry up and press me. I dare you to press me. I can hear it. I can hear it. I did it! Oh, I thought he would comment on that. Oh, yeah, never mind then. Fine. I'm gonna press it again. Okay, where do I get to my package? Where do I go? Hmm. Button. It's a button. We have to press it. Oh! Oh, I turned something off. Hey, what'd you do that for? I was watching that program. Oh, it's a TV. Oh, okay. Sorry! Okay. Yeah, there's like holographic figures there. Oh, I hear music when I get close. Okay. That's actually kind of cool. So it's basically like a concert or something. I found another save point! Is this one gonna work? This one works, okay. So like, some of them work, but not all of them. This is good to know. This is very good to know. What, no, I'm not doing anything. I mean, I'm working, of course. I'm not flirting with this beautiful lady or anything. Jeez, I don't believe this. Why would anyone go out of their way just to come into a room they're just like, they're just passing by? Um, yeah, why would anyone do that? It's like this is a JRPG or something. <laughs> Second number 16, okay. Apparently there's 18 of those special doors. Excuse me, have you seen Lieutenant Virgil? I did, I don't know if I want to see him again. Yeah, I just saw him in the Realian uh, Infirmary. What, the Realian Infirmary? That's strange. Why would he go there? I thought he was a DME addict. Oh, so he, so he is a DME addict. Yeah, apparently they have medication for it, but it only like fights the symptoms and everything. It doesn't actually cure them. Oh, there's a person up there. I was like, I don't see a person here. What the hell? Hello, sir. Just getting the disappearance of a planet. I thought we'd be out here for at least half a year, but it looks like we picked up one little piece of flotsam. That's all? What a letdown. Yeah, so apparently a planet 
went missing? Yo, Miss Vector, come join us for a friendly game of what? No need to worry, the rules are simple. We're just gonna play tag. We're gonna try to catch you, alright? All you gotta do is get the item behind us without getting caught, and you win. Don't try to charge straight it at us either. You need to watch your opponent's moves and use the features of the corridor to your advantage. See, this is just like... I wish I would have framed it better. But, I mean, like, this is a way of teaching you how to avoid enemies in the real world. Okay. Ah! Fuck! 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 Oh my god, they are... Semi-fast. Ah, oh, damn it. That was disappointing. And we won't be able to outrun the Gnosis if they attack. Let me try again, goddammit. Okay, now they're coming for me. And yeah, they are a little faster than me. Not by much, but by enough that it's a problem. So if I go around sharp corners, it takes longer for them to get to me. Oh my god! Oh my god, they are so fast! Well, I mean, like, I'm not entirely surprised they're military people. I got the box! Ha! Huh? Fuck you. Not bad, not bad at all. With those moves, you'll be fine even when things get hot. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I got a med kit. That's nice. And now I have to go back where I was, which is over here, I think. I think I was over here. Again, the mini-map is not exactly helpful. Yes, this is it. This is it. Man, the nerve. Strangers took over the hangar and filled it with their stuff, so there's no room for our equipment. Hmm. Hello, I am here for package. Oh, this is an eggs capsule. Carrying eggs inside. Use the same space compressor technology used in transportation uh, to create a totally self-contained portable eggs hanger. Oh, cool. Hello, sir. I would like package, please. You're from Vector, right? There's a package for you addressed to Miss Uzuki. It's dangerous, so be careful while handling it. It's the uh, MWS. So this is Mizuki. That's what Mizuki's email was about. Hmm. <laughs> Because she still intends for me to, uh, to use me as her guinea pig. Oh, well, I now have a weapon. You know what that means. I can now enter combat. This is not good. Ooh, guns. I like guns. Future guns. Future guns are always fun. Well, if it isn't the Vector Chief, what can I help you with today? I'll say whatever you need real cheap. Oh! Oh, I can buy stuff from him? What can I buy? Uniform. Am I not already wearing that? I feel like I'm already wearing that's a protector and a uniform. What am I wearing? You know that vapor plug-in being used? Similar? Yeah, my company developed it. That's one that destroys obstacles via uh, connection gear. Announcing a working model soon, so Vector is sending us prototypes. If you're interested, come back later. Oh, okay. I can get one later. Nice. Oh, I do have a protector. Oh, and she has a scope that displays enemy information. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I already have those. I don't know what I would need to buy them for. Oh, all I'll... Oh, right, it's save points. Right, okay, even if the save points don't work properly, I can use this. The biospheres are actually... Oh, no, I did not mean to buy that many. Yeah, and I got a bunch of other stuff in the simulation already, so we're good. Okay. Whew, I'm getting tired. I think I should go rest in my room for a while. Okay, I think I pretty much explored most of the ship by now. So, yeah, we'll go back to my room and the rest, which is in a very... Oh, what the heck? Why won't this thing work properly? I don't know. I can't really do anything about that. Now can I? Am I in the... Apologize for the inconvenience, but the construction on the path to the vector. vector. Okay. So I can't... I have to go to my room and rest. Okay. Don't know why my room is in, like, the middle of, like, a busy hallway. Feels like there should be a residential area, but there isn't. That was a grave mistake, Cherenko. What? I believe I already warned you about the dangers of the Zohar. The Zohar? You should have been more careful while retrieving. Oh, the T's! The giant T's are called the Zohar. Yes, sir. I'm afraid there's no excuse for the fatalities that occurred during the recovery. However, we can That's a trivial matter. Forget it. The problem is that those people touched the Zohar and then vanished. And, in addition to that, you're still transporting it while exposed to normal space. 
Yeah. Because of that, we've had to move the plan up two phases. What? We can't have the Zohar falling into the government's hands. Uh oh. Two phases. But why are you? We picked up local UMN activity on our EPR radar. The fleet is column jumping towards the position of your convoy. They'll cross your vector in five hours, 22 minutes. No, it can't be. Them? I told you, you've made a grave mistake. We dispatched reinforcements an hour ago. So keep it safe at all costs until they arrive. W will they make it in time? Just keep it safe until they arrive. That's a no. I don't care if you have to send it into hyperspace by itself. Fortunately for you, your ship is carrying that weapon. I don't know what Vector's up to, but take advantage of the situation if you can. Excuse me. So, yeah, if it's not obvious, he's uh, some kind of spy for some kind of, like, anti-government group and everything. So, yeah. Also, it looks like the Gnosis are going to be attacking us soon. That bad. That's very bad. Excuse me, sir, but they haven't even started field testing it yet. It's too risky. You, of all people, should be cognizant of its power. I don't care if it's unstable. Make them hurry. But, but, sir. That is all. Commander, wait. Commander Margulis. Why would he walk away from the transmission instead of just turning it off? Well, that's not good for like any of us. That is, in fact, very bad. Like I told you before, I can't go anywhere until my project stabilizes. Don't you remember? You know how long you've been saying that? I haven't seen you for two years now. You could at least come home for our parents' memorial. Where's your sense of filial duty? Oh. Uh. Memorial? Oh, come on. Why are you trying to resurrect obscure ancient rituals? <laughs> Wait a minute. You've been reading those weird old books again, haven't you? I swear you're so obsessed with those precious books of yours. That is none of your business, thank you very much. Uh, how many times must I tell you not to quibble about my way of life? What do you mean, way of life? All that stuff's just a stupid old hobby for you. Just remember, don't expect me to take you in when you're old, senile, and all alone. <laughs> That's terribly rude of you, Xion. Don't worry about me. Just promise me you'll come home this year, okay? If you don't... All right, all right, when I get some time off. Look, gotta run. See ya. Hey, wait. I'm not going to let you dodge the question again. Hello? Hello? <laughs> that was her brother. Honestly, I wish he'd consider my feelings for a change. He asked you to come home to remember your parents that died in the Milchen conflict, by the way. I mean, like, I don't think he's, I don't think it's a big ask. I mean, like, yeah, he was like, I haven't seen you for two years. Could you at least come home so that we can remember the memory of our parents together? But I have work! Ugh. Granted, it is, it is a huge government-funded project. It wouldn't exactly be easy to take time off, you know? I'm a little tired. I feel bad about doing this, but I think I should get a bit of a rest. I can't. I'm worried about everyone. Maybe I'll take a cat nap. That's like your last chance to explore the ship, but I feel fine not exploring the ship because I already did that. Oh. Good night. Okay, that would be cool. Like a window out into space to look at as you fall asleep. Oh my god, that would be so beautiful to look at. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. I think, oh shit, I think there's a problem with the emulation. Okay. So I managed to, like, actually save. So, I hope that this fixes whatever that problem was. Like, I shut, I shut down the whole thing and restarted it, so 
If that doesn't work, then I guess we're just not going to be able to see that scene, I guess. Okay, yeah, that was weird. We we missed, like, just one scene, and um, I'm trying to remember what happens. Hold on. Okay, so I found out that that one scene is just, like, like in the emulation, it's just... For some reason, there was a problem with, like, rendering it and all that. Apparently, it, it was just Xion in that weird graveyard again, looking at the, um, the weird, like, you know, ghost girl. And now, apparently, she is in our room! Why? Hello, strange ghost child. I think she's a ghost child. She doesn't seem, I mean, she's glowing, and she is kind of, you know, transparent. A little see-through. A little opaque. Um, so yeah, I concerned. Oh, the T is acting interesting. Is the tea pulsing? Oh no. Is Cosmos pulsing? Why is Cosmos pulsing? Ah! Ah! What the? You're all still here? Hey, how's it going? We're trying to pinpoint today's problem, among other things. Hmm. What about you? Oh, Commander Cherenkov gave me a piece of his mind earlier. Ouch. Glad to see you survive. Oh yeah, he was telling him. That guy's relentless. Yeah. You act like a bunch of college kids, and what is Vector run by a Girl Scout? He just went on and on. Man, that's just not right. Seriously. Then again, he knows they're all about to fight the Gnosis, and you guys don't. If you guys do that, you'd probably be panicking too and trying to get shit set up. But it isn't right to have the Chief taking all the heat. This is true. Still, I wonder why he seems so nervous. Cause you all about to die, and remember, it's all Pollyanna's fault. She, she, she raised all the death flags for us. That bitch. Whoa! Why is it glowing? Now exiting the asteroid field. That's excellent. Prepare to gate jump. Okay, so Pollyanna is there. Okay, Aye, goody. Captain. All ships entering approach. 19 minutes, 30 seconds to column area. UMN, pulse received. Current coordinates locked. Transfer vector correction to 103. Target, Athens column. Captain, a warning signal. No it shit. Can't be. Is it them? No, sir. The detection system is silent. How's it look on your side? Nothing over here, either. Are you sure it's not an error? No, no it's not. What is this? What's going on? Sir, I don't think an external source is causing this warning signal. Then what's causing it? I'll run a search. I've pinpointed the anomaly. It's inside the ship! Sector 3! Okay, now it's the main warning! Damn it, Pollyanna! It's... Cosmos! Wait, what? Cosmos is doing this? Because, because Cosmos can identify that the Gnosis is on the way, maybe? Oh. Oh, I was like, that's not gonna wake her up. That will, though. Damn.
Okay, that's cool. Like virtual glasses, just tapping a thing that sits on your nose and the glasses come up. That's fucking cool. I don't know why, but the jacket's pretty important, I guess. Currently, we are at emergency level three. This circuit is reserved for class A and B users only. Well, shit. Yes, but who could do that? Especially on a spaceship in the middle of nowhere. That's impossible. Cosmos isn't supposed to wake up unless I enter the activation code from this terminal. That's the failsafe we integrated. Yeah. This can't be happening. Oh yeah. Not again. It was bad the first time. Oh, and the emergency shutters. Oh no, she was so close. Now she's so far away. It's really happening. It's exactly the same as the last time. Oh shit. Oh no, yeah. She lost her uh, her lover, Kevin. He was one of the people that died in the incident. Yeah, they're, uh... Hmm. Oh no, what is it now? What is it now? Detecting a large-scale spatial distortion ahead of us. An enormous mass is gating out. Impossible. We're still outside the column area. That's... The UMN geodesic structure is being breached. The target! It appears to be interacting with the UMN somehow! It's being hacked! That's possible? Massive gravity fluctuations! Surface anomalies forming in space-time! Impossible! That defies all laws of physics! Shooting mass, the numbers are completely inconsistent. I can't get a clear reading. Whatever it is, it's huge! The amplitude! The hell? It's like a tidal wave! The readings are increasing! It's entering normal space! Captain! Captain! Straight ahead! There it is! Nurses! Yeah. The Gnosis can defy all laws of physics. They're technically like fourth dimensional beings. And some of them are very big. Others are small. That one's big, though. That, that can't be good. Oh, I think it spawned a bunch of Gnosis inside the ship with that. All those little balls were Gnosis. Oh, shit. God damn it, this is all Pollyanna's fault! Going into battle without an egg, you. Tears to my eyes. Well, let's see how they do with shields. Wow, what a dick bag. Literally using them as meat shields. The fuck? Yeah, the reason the Gnosis are so terrifying is because, as I said, they're fourth dimensional beings. That means that they can hurt us, but we can't hurt them! Oh, 
Oh, oh fuck. Whoa, I forgot that it turns them white. Oh, it fucking shatters. Oh, wow. Fuck balls, man. Yeah, what are you supposed to do? Quite literally, you can't hurt them. All you can do is, like, try to survive, but I mean, like, you know, you, you, you can't actually do anything. What in the world is going on? And I'm sorry, I know I'm over time. I'm not sure how long because of editing and everything. But that is where we're going to cut it for this episode, everybody. Ooh, boy. Yeah, we're going to be uh, we're gonna be picking this up right from here next time with all this emergency stuff. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you being here with me. Yeah, next episode's going to get crazy. So I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am because, oh, my God. Oh, like, experiencing this as an adult is so much different than when I was a kid because when I was younger, I didn't fully understand what was going on. I didn't have, like, I wasn't as good at, like, piecing information together in video games as I am now. So, yeah, I am definitely super excited for what's going to happen next, and um, I hope that you guys are too. So, thanks again, and as always, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, you know what to do. Like! Comment, subscribe if you are not already, ring that bell for all the notifications is, and until next time, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers.